Hello and welcome to the Monday, April 22nd, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. On Friday, I talked about how Xavier wrote about some malware that he found in the form of a UDF file, a file format similar to ISO files and often used in CD and DVD images. If you wonder how you may be able to analyze such malware, our second handler from Belgium, Didier, has a suggestion for you. The two file formats are similar enough that the ISO parser Python module will work nicely for either file format. You can use this module then to extract files included in the UDF image and then submit them for analysis individually. That of course should make it easier for anti-malware software to find malicious files in order if you do other things like for example looking for hashes and the like of these files, it's probably better to look at the individual files versus the UDF file. In the past, if a website would like to find out who links to it, it was possible to use the referrer header in HTTP to get reasonable good estimates. However, uh, this method has become less and less useful over the years. Not only have privacy concerns caused some users to use special software to remove the header from requests, more importantly, sites using HTTPS and most sites these days, yes, uh, do use HTTPS, have not been sending refer headers. To make up for this loss in tracking, a new HTML standard has been developed. Sites now may add a ping attribute to URLs and with that, uh, they can actually then instruct the browser to send the notification to this particular URL whenever a user clicks on the link. Last week, Firefox was the last major browser to announce its support for this feature. The argument for this attribute is performance. An alternative is to use a link to an intermediate URL that will then register the click and then forward the user to the target site. Now, this of course then requires that the user first load that second URL, which could delay actually getting to the final page. But with the ping attribute, while the site is loading, it does send this HTTP request to notify that you clicked on the link. So both pages are loaded at the same time, which makes things a bit faster. I have a link to a blog post by Apple's WebKit team that explains some of the issues with Ping. There's also sort of a denial of service problem here because basically anybody could set up a URL that then sends a ping or instructs the browser to send a ping to any URL on your site and that could be then used to flood your site with requests. And sticking with new browser issues for another story, you probably heard how Microsoft will be using a Google Chrome based HTML rendering engine in future versions of Edge. In its latest preview build, it also included a feature to dynamically alter the user agent for certain websites. As Edge starts up, it retrieves a special JSON configuration file from config.edge.skype.com. This file governs various configuration items, among them a list of specific domain names and what user agent to use for these domains. According to Microsoft, this should help with sites that improperly render pages for Edge or for example, just tell you that Edge will not work on the site. In some cases, the new Chrome-based Edge will actually pretend to be the older version of Edge. 
This uh, could cause problems if you are using user agents to look for anomalies or covert channels. That's actually something that we usually uh, recommend uh, you look for. Uh, but well, uh, with uh, Edge using all these different user agents, you may get uh, some mixed results here. And the French government tried to implement a secure chat service for its government internal conversations. Not only does it provide end-to-end -end encryption and an infrastructure that is entirely located in France, but it also is supposed to be only available to government employees who, unlike uh, with other media like email and phones, would be assured that they're talking to authenticated users. Now, everybody can download Load the app. So security researcher Baptiste Robert did download it and took a look at the code. It does filter email addresses when you sign up. Uh, either it has to be the gov.fr or lsa.fr email address. But what it does not check for is if you're using two domain names. So what he figured out is if you're using, for example, your email at gmail.com, and then you add a second at and then gov.fr, it will pass the input validation, but the validation email that gives you then a token that you need in order uh, to actually complete the sign up will be sent to the first address. So essentially that uh, gov.fr part will just be cut off if you have two ad symbols in your email address. This has been fixed now. Uh, he has reported uh, this uh, to the French government and apparently within a couple hours, they were able to fix this vulnerability. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.